Hey everyone, for this video, we're remaking the amazing cult classic FPS, Blood, in Unreal Engine. We'll walk through how I recreated Blood's iconic elements in Unreal Engine 5 and tackle the challenge of bringing sprite-based characters into a 3D world. But here's where it gets interesting. As a surprising twist, I've also implemented some roguelike mechanics in the game. Stick around till the end to see how things turned out, as well as get your hands on a fully playable demo and experience for yourself how roguelike elements can take this classic FPS to a whole new level. Before we dive in, let me share something personal. The build engine games, especially the holy trinity of Duke Nukem, Shadow Warrior, and Blood, were all a huge part of my childhood, and among the three, Blood is my absolute favorite. There's a timeless charm to these build engine games, much like the enduring appeal of pixel art in 2D games which is going strong to this day. And I don't think this is just nostalgia, there's something about the artistic choices, the atmosphere they create with limited resources, that continues to resonate even today. In reimagining Blood, I tried to capture that essence while bringing it into a modern engine. Alright, enough intro, now, let's get started. Since the game uses a lot of sprites instead of 3D models, and Unreal is a fully 3D engine, I knew I couldn't use the normal 3D workflow I was used to. So, before starting to work on any gameplay, I had to answer the question, could I pull off this style in Unreal Engine? To find out, I decided to start by recreating the iconic crypt section at the beginning of the game. I live again. I started by setting up the basic geometry for the level first. Before moving forward, I decided to add a simple player controller with a 2D gun to be able to test the level. Next, I wanted to add some textures to the level. I found a website that had the textures from Blood and downloaded them. Afterwards, I brought the textures into Unreal Engine and applied them to the floors and walls. Now to test how the level looks with textures. Pretty good. Now, I could continue to go with the same flat lighting as in the build engine. But since I had the power of dynamic lighting in UE5 at my fingertips, I decided to experiment with that and see how the level would look. I decided to use torches as the source of light, so I started by setting up one to see how it would affect the atmosphere of the level. Now testing the level to see how things look. Pretty good. With the crypt section textured and lit, I moved on to add more of the environment. This way, I'd have more space to play with when I started working on the gameplay. And another test to make sure the area outside the crypt looks good as well before moving forward. With the crypt and the area outside ready, I moved on to setting up the first enemy we meet in the game, the Axe Zombie. First, I found the sprite sheet for the zombie and started extracting the animations for the idle and run states. I also created a system to show the correct animation based on the angle between the enemy and the player. And finally, I added a navigation mesh so the zombie could move around as well and not just run in place. I started by giving the zombie a sight component. When the player is within the sight range, which is shown as a green area, the zombie will detect and chase the player. And then we want him to attack the player when close. To do that, I started by extracting the sprites and creating the animation for the attack. Afterwards, I added the attacking behavior to the zombie's AI, and tested it to make sure it works.
Now to add the ability for the enemy to damage the player. For this I added a hitbox to the enemy. And then I added a bleed effect to the player when they get hit by the zombie for good measure. Now we have zombies that can hit the player, but we need to be able to hit them back. I started with Caleb's iconic weapon, the pitchfork. First, I grabbed the sprites for the pitchfork and put them together to create a weapon that could be added to the player. For the hit detection, instead of using a hitbox like I did for the enemy, I decided to use a method where the game draws a line from the pitchfork to detect if it hits something. I tested this with the gun as well to make sure it works. And since the lines are not visible in the game, I added some blood particle effects to show that the hits are connecting. I also experimented with some other blood effects, some of which did not go so well. Now stand aside, worthy adversary. Tis but a scratch. Another thing you might have noticed in blood is that when you hit an enemy, they are pushed back a bit. And I wanted to add in the same effect to my weapons. At first, I might have gone a bit overboard. But then I tweaked the values to get the right amount of pushback. Next, I decided to work on my favorite weapon in the whole game, Caleb's sawed-off shotgun. Yeah. I started by bringing in the sprites for the shotgun and adding it to the player. And then added hit detection to it. And here is the final result for the shotgun. Now moving on, another missing piece that we need to recreate the first part of the game is another iconic enemy type. The cultist. Just like before, I brought in the sprites, set up the AI, and put it all together. And here are the results. Get up, Negro! Now with the player and enemy setup finished, I decided to continue adding a bit more to the level. And here are the results. Now, I could continue to create the rest of the first level, but an interesting idea hit me. What if I added a randomly generated level instead? A while back, I tried a roguelike Doom mod called Doom Infinite, which I really liked. So why not give a bit of the same treatment here for blood? After some thinking, I decided to give it a try. If it turned out to be fun, I would include it in the demo, Otherwise, I could just recreate the rest of the first level. Now, in the original game, you start off in the crypt, rising from your grave. I live again. But I had this thought. What if instead of leaving the crypt, we just keep going deeper and deeper? Here's what I came up with. I'd make a bunch of rooms that all have that spooky crypt vibe. Then I'd write some code to stitch these rooms together in random ways. So every time you play, you get a different layout. It's like you're always discovering new parts of this massive, creepy crypt. Alright, so now that I've made these rooms, let me show you how they come together. Here's an example of what a stitched together level might look like. 
As you can see, we've got a mix of corridors, chambers, and maybe a few nasty surprises waiting around the corners. It's random every time, so you never know quite what to expect. Now, to give it more of that classic 90s shooter vibe, I decided to throw in a couple of extra elements. First up, we've got a chest hidden somewhere in the level. Inside? A key, of course. And what's a key without a door to open? So I added an exit door to the dungeon. You've gotta find that key if you want to get out. It's kind of like those old school shooters where you're always on the hunt for colored key cards or skull keys or whatever. Adds a bit of exploration to the mix. Alright, now the moment of truth. Let's take a look at some actual gameplay in our procedurally generated crypt level. And there you have it, Blood Reimagined as a roguelike in Unreal Engine 5. I hope you guys enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. I have released a playable demo on itch.io for free, so you can try it out yourself, and let me know what you think in the comments. Depending on the reception, who knows? We might see more of this Blood-inspired roguelike in the future. Make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications to stay up to date with what comes next. Your support and feedback means a lot. Catch y'all later.